Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Legends of Arcadia Genesis. Our party sleeps the night, and when you awake in the morning, the caravan that you saw on the north side of the river approaches the woods as you break camp, and you can see people setting to work, beginning to chop down the closest trees, beginning to dig trenches. The sheriff is here, leading some bewildered young men and women who are looking like they're holding weapons for the first time in their life. They see you on the south side and give you a wave, but go about their duties. Which are? Chopping, Chopping down, down trees. trees. Wearing high heels. Digging trenches. Suspenders and bras. Yeah. Maybe some great hero should tell these terribly um, naive people that there are some giant spiders about, because they don't seem to care very much, do they? You should watch out for the big spiders. Do you think that'll do it? What? I think that'll do it. Comes the call from across the river. <laughs> Never big mind. Big spiders in the trees. Don't get bit. Get like a we thumbs up, up and a head nod from the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he heard you, but uh, that's on him, really. Eh, no. <laughs> I let him know. Um, sheriff Rob. <clears throat> That morning, I will burn a wind column to replace it with a light spell. Hmm. Nice. I I don't want to do color spray because if we have to deal with ogres, they're going to be probably mostly impervious since I'm level one. Yes. Color spray. I don't. Gonna work. I think I'm going to burn Fist of Stone mm. and take Wall of Fog instead. Color spray. They'll just get a save versus color spray, right? Um, I believe if they're so, I believe Neil changed it to be based on like level difference. I don't think so I've that was touched the no, That's how it's always been, I think. I thought it was like based on your level, like level six and stuff like that. If you're level six, you get a save. Yeah, but that's not how it works. It's based on the the description on Regal Goblin says it's based on the level difference between the caster and the target. It's and if right. They're three or Regal more Goblins above, is by the book. Yeah, yeah that's that supposed by the book. Spray? Okay, yeah. I I thought it was based on just but the he, raw level. If the high it's level, both, and you uh, yeah. you don't. You don't stun them anyway. You only like fly them. They're they're stunned in my case for things that are far enough ahead of me, um, but it's only one round. It's not it's not worth it. If I could like make them just totally pass out for two d four, I I definitely take color spray. But I'm pretty sure anything that we need to consider running from is probably gonna be mostly impervious from it. So I'm no one's impervious, them. but they just they just get a save, right? It, and it's like a stun, right? They're they're gonna shrug off most of the effects because they won't have. They will be stunned for one round. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is. I'd rather I'd rather have Wall of Fog. Okay. Wall of Fog. Misty Vapors, 20 foot cube plus 10 per level. About two feet. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. I uh, I gather my like trappings that I slept with, like my holy symbol and some like burning incense that I'd set up around me where I was sleeping. Or around the tent, perhaps, I guess. And I collect it, gather my stuff, and then we should press on. All right. Your incense collected, your prayers done. The party gathers near the edge of the woods, I presume. Your mule with you. Have we named your mule? Nope. It's a mule with no name. No. Um, uh, we call it uh, Tenacious. <laughs> oh my god, that's good. Tenacious M. Okay. Wait, are you sure it's a mule and not a donkey? <laughs> <laughs> His I'll call. Donkey, mule, or ass. You They're all the same price, all the same <laughs> capacity. Uh, I mean, mules are the most common, like, load bearers, right? <clears throat> they're they're in, in D&D 2 either they're equivalent. Okay, but well... In real I mean, life, I think there are differences. It's a donkey mule. It's it's a, it's a mule donkey. It's a crossbreed. We should Perfect. sell out and say, next person to donate to nail guts to have the donkey named after them. <laughs> <laughs> well, their ex-girlfriend... Really talking. excited for PL4 Ying... <laughs> Three R R zero R. All right. Well, 
You know beyond the edge of this wood is danger, monsters, ogres, and the goddess of death herself. And on this side of the wood is a peaceful and verdant valley with a wall being built, a palisade wall at the end of it. Um, and yeah, defenseless people. So just oh, yeah. before we walk into the darkness, one question if you guys don't mind. How many giant spiders does it take to slay an army of ogres, you think? Are we so sure that the spiders and ogres aren't on the same side? Well, it's just, you know, it's it's just a... Let's assume this for the purpose of the question. Yeah, let's assume they are okay. on different sides. How many spiders sure. do we need to well, kill an army of ogres? Spiders are probably not as large or as strong as ogres, and ogres, mm -hmm. due to their large size, are probably better equipped to handle the poisons of spiders. So right. I would guess at least a ratio of three to one. Mm hmm. Okay. That sounds reasonable to me. So how much trouble did we have to kill a single giant spider yesterday? Nobody was hurt at all. Go on hunt. Hmm. Yeah. That's so. Not that I don't have any faith in you people. No, let me rephrase that. I don't think I have the faith in us to kill an entire army of ogres. Oh, I assumed that wasn't what we were doing. We're we're an advanced scout, not a vanguard. Right. So we're just having a look to see where they are, and then we're turning around. Is that the plan? You know, numbers, formations, uh, equipment, supplies, location. I, so I assume their plan, their intent. Right. So are we moving forward sneakily then today? Are sure. we slowing our pace to be more careful to not be discovered before we discover them? Sure. Great. Sounds good. That sounds good to me. I'm ready. Good talk. <laughs> Let's head out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me just bring us a little document in case we need it. That is not the right document. Yeah, it's perfect. And this can be viewed by all players. So I have added a, a movement rate document for uh, our hex map here. Ooh. So as you travel through the woods, so you start with um, twice your movement rate worth of movement point I so you that all the have movement rate document is blank does that mean we don't get to move through uh, there should be a I picture involved i do see the picture mm, i just get a white square of nothing well, okay that's not very great um <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not particularly useful <laughs> it's uh, under handouts. how far do we go yeah. per point yeah no i per, see the handout cost. i have it it's, it's just a double white your movement rate so if moving right 12 you have 24 points Right. So and you should only go four miles a day in like four hexes, which is four like hexes. 20 miles. And each hex oh, is five okay, miles. Okay, okay. I thought this was miles. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then in the woods, it is three hexes. Yeah. Three hexes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. I think if you refresh, you might be able to get it to work, but uh, if not, it's on. was on stream. Now it's gone. So, woods is the only time where there's no advantage to force marching. I believe that is the case, yes. Okay. I mean, I think we would walk carefully today anyway. I mean, yeah, yeah. you still could go, you could go partial hexes conceivably, maybe. <clears throat> yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, hopefully not, but we can work that if it becomes needed. Um, left my coffee in the other room. <laughs> I can actually hear it. <laughs> it's whistling. <laughs> Disaster. <laughs> Don't get it now. I'll give you permission. Go on. Honey. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Honey. <laughs> okay. So can anybody... All right, guys. So how are we going to break Landis the game while he's gone? <laughs> I think you'll just start spewing acid out of your hands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now that you've got that as cannon, you can sort of just like spray it 
That's a I don't think it's like a violent spray because that's not how. I like it more as like dribbles. Yeah, just, just like dripping, dripping, just dripping like, uh, even dribbles. Low pressure acid. flow of acid out of my palms. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, we yeah we resurrected the winter gods while you were gone. Oh man, <laughs> I was hoping they'd stay dead forever. Okay, let's uh move on in. Uh, who is at the lead of the party? Who is the first one in the woods? Probably who takes the June? point? He is the yeah, fearless sure. leader. I'll take it. Fearless uh, leader, June. Okay, I'll walk a su- beside June. Oh, we walk all next we need to each other. Do we need to be single file? <laughs> yeah, we walk into the line. You don't have to be single file. Form a phalanx. You know, usually you have one person in the lead. doesn't have to be. I think proper Baldur's Gate strategy says we should shape up like a triangle. <laughs> what does that do? I mean, you maybe walk like this. I always walked in the six man so formation. You keep the clerics in the back to keep the fighters, Hale and Hardy, and the wizard in the middle so they can shed some light. And don't ever let the damn thief out of sight. Will the thief steal from you? If... Alright, well. The deeper we get into the forest, the more nervous Abaddon becomes, looking over his shoulder at every sound or noise in the forest. Can I? Sorry, before we get too much farther here, can I actually get your ACs? Because I seem to have not written them down on the overlay. 10 for, for Kale. June, what's yeah, your yeah. AC? 14. Abaddon, what's your AC? 17. 17? Ryan, yep. what's your AC? 17. God. And I mean, that's, that's 11. 11. Perfect. Thank that's you. Like fully armored with a shield, but yeah. 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 Okay. That's all. Thank you. Uh, I will fix the overlays in just a, a wee minute. So, in we go. June at the front. Why don't you move us uh, one hex, June? And just remember, we're all on the south side of the river here. Ooh, maybe the vision's a little high. Yeah, so you walk on into the river. Uh, it takes a bit of a bend. Continues forward. Um, and it's just sort of darkish in here. Like, there's a lot so, of shade coming from the, the trees. They're built, they're close enough together that there's not, like, large light shafts coming through. Um, hmm, what else do we need to say about this place? So if the drums were only a few miles off, they should be in this hex. So I think we're on lookout for a large clearing where perhaps a drum circle could have occurred last night. Hmm. Very clever. Worked. I didn't break anything. Very clever indeed. Uh, Theoretically, they would be close to the water, right? Easiest landmark to travel by. Should we yes. travel along the river with a respectful distance from it to make sure we don't run into any unsaberables on the way? I mean, yeah, why not? I think we're near the river, right? We don't have a, but, we don't really have much water with us anyway, so I think it's wise to stay by the river. There we go. It all crooked. What's going on with our token? Why is it weird looking, huh? Why can't you be normal? There. Oh my god, okay. There. Much, much better. Uh, So you stay by the water and just look for a clearing that might have a drum circle in it. Yeah. Um, The party sticks together, I take it? Or do you spread out and search for clues? Uh, We probably spread, like, a few feet apart in every case, right? Like, you don't want to be too tightly formed when you're oh like in a small scouting party, but we're, we're staying together. All right. You're not like, I'm going to go check out what's behind that hill while you go check out what's behind that hill. And no. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Right. You search the woods for a short while until you come across the burned out remains of a large, uh, campfire. And you arrive, you can see the ground around it has been dirtied. Uh, there's footprints all about. The, the brush, the, the residue from fallen pine needles has been kind of cleared to the side. There is a circle of stones maybe six feet across with a pile of ash within it. 
Um, how big can I footprints? get a count of yeah. how many creatures I think there are based on the footprints with a tracking proficiency? Yes, oh, yeah. give me a tracking proficiency check. Absolutely. If I can find skills on this sheet, there we are. Uh, 33. Nice. Nice. 33 is quite good. Um, you can gather that there were probably on the order of like 12 to 16 mm -hmm. ogre sized creatures here within the last uh, 12 to 20 hours. Okay. Do I get a feel for uh, the direction they went once the fire was extinguished? Mm -hmm. They all head in a similar direction. Not in a nice, clean, single file, but in mm -hmm. like a kind of a herd has moved out of here. Toward? Uh, north from here. North. Okay. Yeah. Across it looks like the they river? looks like they head towards the river. Okay. Um... I let the party know, of course, that I, there's about 12 creatures and they seem to have headed north once the drum beating fire burning is over. Do you think that's her entire army? Mm. No, but no. it's a sizable force. So we must keep going then. I mean... I believe it would be wise to understand the intentions of this party before we moved on further. Yeah, Perhaps this would be the first threat our new home faces. I don't think we want to leave a dozen ogres between us and our escape. So what are you suggesting, June? I suggest that we follow the tracks. I am in agreement. Can we cross the river here? Oh, well, you can head towards uh, it. Yep. Yeah. Um, June again in the lead. Guys, mm -hmm. taking your time and going carefully. June, would you make me a dexterity check, please? I can indeed. Just pure dex? Pure dex. A 29. <sighs> oh, this guy rolls. Yeah, you managed to pick your way carefully over this hill, uh, this like rocky outcropping that mm -hmm. the tracks go over. You lose the tracks on the rocky hill, except for these little spots here and there where the lichen has been clearly disturbed. And as you get towards the top, but before you reach over it, you can hear some low and deep voices babbling in a language I'm pretty sure you don't understand. No, I don't understand any language, but the common one. Love it. I did actually swap my swimming proficiency for an ogre language. So if he tells, yeah, if I can get close enough, I can listen. Oh, there. No, no. Sorry. What, what's that? No, no. Voices. They're kind of these low, guttural, very soft sounding words. So does Ezewal hear them then? Yeah. So I, I I do have an ogre language. Yeah. Proficiency. I'm yeah. assuming June tells you these things and doesn't keep the information to himself. No. Aren't we right there? He's in front, so he'll hear it first. But like, I, I wanted to yeah. give him an option to just make a, a choice and what he wants no, to do. No, 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 no. The, I, you know, wave yeah. up everyone to Perfect. listen to the ogre voices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, um, so the ogres are uh, seemingly playing some sort of game involving sticks and water, and they're like splashing each other back and forth, and you can sort of eventually hear the actual sounds of splashing, and someone's throwing rocks. They must be near to the river, which you can hear um, from the other side of the hill a little bit. Um, they seem to be enjoying themselves and playing stick and water. <laughs> Israel, how many are there? can't see. They sound like they're playing in the water. And I guess we climb to the top of this rocky hill and peer over. Yeah. You... Or I will at least. Sure. Um, you can make it to the top of the rocky outcropping and look on over. And sure enough, there is a diversion from the river. It looks fairly recent. A large pile of wet mud kind of rests against the rocky hill that you're on. And a, a pool has been dug out on the other side of it with a, a little trench leading towards the river. The ogres have managed to make themselves like a 12 to 15 foot wide 
pool of water that they can play in without having to worry about being swept down river. And uh, they're, some of them are collecting large stones while a few of them like hold their nose and plunge in the water and then they pop up and someone throws a rock at them and they try and drop back down before the rock hits them. Other people are out collecting new rocks. Uh, you can count four ogres in the pool, four standing nearby, uh, playing, you know, throwing rocks at them, two lounging and napping. The rest of them are nowhere to be seen. I like look back and like signal back. <laughs> There's There's ten. Nine too many. Can we get a description of these ogres? Yeah, they're for, about for eight the viewers. And a half. Eight and yeah. a half feet tall. Um, a few of them are kind of, the ones in the water are kind of skin and s- thin and scrawny. The ones taking naps are a little bit like rounder and more rotund. Uh, they're all completely naked. They carry a couple of like uh, clubs. I shouldn't carry. They don't carry them. They're lying around, clearly hand carved clubs. Um, sparse balding hair on the top, just like a few little wisps. Uh, their skin is like a sickly yellow, maybe like a almost like a pukey yellow color. Um, large spots and moles dot their hides. And moles are all a little hairy. They've got like a a thin layer of spotty hair across their back and shoulders. Bit of a hunched posture. I will whisper under my breath. Ah, oh, yeah. The army of death playing in their kiddie pool. We can't possibly fight them all. If we sneak past them, then they'll be behind us. What do we do? Yes, we have to sneak past them. But then, like Israel said, we don't want them to be between us and safety. But we do have to go deeper in. Do we? I mean, is there not enough danger right here? Do you intend to engage it? I look to June. Hmm. I see no reason to bring death upon these creatures at the moment. I would wish to know their purpose. These creatures are death. Don't let their playful demeanor fool you. They will just as soon bathe in your blood and would you visit violence upon us play with your bones are we not mediators of death ourselves it's either or or them avoids eye contact perhaps we can lure one away from the herd Hmm. I'm sure this is possible does anyone fancy themselves as bait If we lure it away as well, could you speak with it? I speak their tongue. Hmm. I nod. Excellent. Uh, Then let us lure one away. Perhaps if it is truly as you say, and too violent to be trusted, it will be slain. And we can repeat this process as much as necessary. But should it be possible, let us determine what they are doing here. Their purpose, their intent. It's around now that two more ogres come out of the woods, babbling in their sort of bouncing which, syllabic which, voice. Which direction? Like, are they coming behind us or like from a side, uh, one of the sides? They're coming from the west. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and in their bouncing syllabic voice, the front one says in ogre, Hey, you guys, <laughs> I found another one. Uh, and the other ogres look back and kind of give a yay sort of cheer to the rest of them. Okay. And the new ogre that is being introduced goes, Oh, uh, is this where we, is this the fight? Is this the arena? And the other ogres go, no, no, that's night time. Now we just rest. Um, and the other ogre comes down and plops by the pool and watches the game of you know, stick water or rock water, whatever it happens to be at the moment. They that they found another one. Perhaps they've just been created in these woods, are gathering their forces. 
He also mentioned something about an arena. I think those drums we heard were some sort of fight club. Hmm. Unless they mean Tataka's in the night. They have broken the first rule of fight club, it seems. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, is there one off to the side? Uh, yeah, there and are. Maybe. So the four there that are, are throwing sticks and rocks occasionally have to go and resupply because the ones in the water uh, mm. are not returning the sticks and the rocks. The game seems to be if you get hit, you have to leave the water and you can take whatever you can carry with you. But the only okay. ammunition that people have on the outside is what they bring with them or find. So, so they'll occasionally, occasionally leave the water to go collect some sticks. Yeah, they'll leave like the banks to like go get more sticks and rocks and come back and throw them at the people in the water. Maybe if we wait in the woods where they're collecting sticks, we can lure one off. Sure. This seems to yes. be a grand plan. If they're looking for other ogres as well, perhaps you could convince one of them that you're an ogre deeper into the trees. You can speak their tongue. It's going to be hard pressed to make himself sound like an ogre, though. You know? I mean, do these guys know what all ogres sound like? There has to be a pip squeak of an ogre. Hey, guys! There's always one person who speaks like that, right? Yeah. Maybe it's a tiny ogre. How about that? Hmm. Well, I've been waiting for as well to enact the plan one way or another. Uh, I like look back and like gesture for the party to come with. <laughs> I think we should all go to that, the edge of the woods down there. Yeah, okay. And follow quietly. <clears throat> okay. You get to the edge of the woods down there. Stick, just yeah. like as we're going. So I have one available. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Add one stick to your inventory. You don't no, actually have to. It's not going to stay in my inventory. I just want it for That's fine. purposes yeah. of when this happens. It is a, a brand new forest. You can find sticks of all sizes. I want a solid, like, I, I kind of want a solid one. My intention here is that uh, should it be necessary, I can run the stick across the trunks of trees to make loud noises to try mm -hmm. to, like, attract attention. Okay. Well, you've gathered your stick. You've, those of you that have moved have moved. What are you going to do? Hmm. I guess we're going to wait. waiting for... We're going to... Go ahead. Are we waiting for one of the ogres to go decide to go pick up more rocks and sticks? Or are we trying to lure one like away from the rest of them? Like from their oh. I think yeah. we're going to wait for one to come over here to the edge of the forest and collect more rocks and sticks. Okay. So and then we're going to try and lure it were... further away. Neil, you said there was one. There were some that were just like sleeping away from the rest of the ogres? Uh, yeah, they're kind of like sleeping against that hillside. So they're like a little bit away, maybe like 50 feet away from the pool. Still pretty close, are they like close within, enough that they can... like, Are they within, like, tossing distance from the edge of the woods? Uh, you're all, like, from the, the border of the woods, you mean? Like, like, we're in the trees, right? And they're mm -hmm. in, like, a clearing near the river, right? So, like, from some area in the trees where we are, could oh, I yeah. potentially take a small stone, like, toss it and hit one of the sleeping ones, try to get its attention? Easy peasy. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do. As, as they're trying to figure out what's going on, I, I find a stone... And I kind of crouch in the in the woods a little bit, and I wait for an opportunity and just give us toss, arc it softly so that it hits one of the the closest sleeping ogres against the. the what is he ogre. doing? <laughs> All right, uh, you toss a rock at an ogre, it hits him, and the ogre kind of like like bats at it like it's a fly or something. And as I notice that he wakes up, I just kind of like bang my stick against the, the trunk of the tree next to me a little bit. This was looking at the rest of the party like, what's yeah. <laughs> the ogre, crumbling before their eyes. The ogre throws a, a glance in your direction, or the direction of the sound. I see him look, and then I take a step back, and I bang the, the tree like a little farther away. And Who then... The comes the voice in Ogre that only Azul understands. And I, I step back again, having heard him, and I bang a tree a little farther away. 
and I'm trying to just like draw him towards the tree line away from the rest of the ogres. The uh, ogre gets up, dusts himself off, turns to the others and goes, hey, what's that noise? Uh, and the other ogres ignore him, still playing their game of stick water or watching, uh, and decides to bounce in your direction. Excellent. So I, I continue themselves. I continue running the, the stick across the trees so that he can hear it, and I just make my way back towards the party and let them know, I, I have one following. They will be yeah. here shortly. We're kind of all seeing. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. I, uh, I will cast Bless before this thing gets here, so I will take out my uh, incense and sort of wave it around a little bit and we- bless us all. Well, what does when you're a cleric of Malchus, right? When you are mm. trying to bring Malchus's blessing to the party, what yes. sort of words do you use? Mm. What does a blessing of the god of chaos sound like? I mean, like I guess it's talking about hope that we all get uh, good rolls on the dice, or that the tides of chaos <laughs> favor as well, <laughs> and the, uh, the random elements of chance fall in our favor. Well, that's as good as any. Your blessing goes off. Right. Everyone has what? Plus one to hit, plus one to saves? I think yeah. so. Yeah. Fear saves, maybe? Just fear saves? Yeah, I, I think so. That's a worried. We'll see if All we right. need saves. Yeah. The ogre comes yeah, around the large, rocky mound that June is, has led him abound. Yeah. Izuol uh, produces the mask that was, I don't know, tucked in the robe or hanging from their side. Uh, and puts it on. It is a bronze mask, of a fearsome creature with tusks and horns. And uh, puts it over their head and uh, steps off to the side to, I guess, attempt to lure this creature. Okay. Well, Disguising. You're... Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say you're a little bit away from where the camp is. Uh, enough mm-hmm. that your footsteps probably wouldn't be heard by them as the ogre lumbers in your direction following the clattering sounds of June stick on trees. Yeah. Uh, with the bless um, spell, I don't think there's much time after that before the creature will be here. So Yeah, so Izul sort of runs off to the side adjacent to June to lure it a little further away, disguising their voice and calling out an ogre echoing within the mask. Hey, you! I'm over here! Why don't you give me a charisma check for your best ability to intimidate, uh, to imitate an ogre? Ooh, that's, you know... Passable. Passable. An ogre might be thinking that you're an ogre, maybe a, a sick one, or a young one, or a distant one. Or a sexy lady ogre. Probably not. <laughs> no, I'm gonna say that's not how it goes. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Damn, I'll roll better on my charisma check next time. (laughs) Um, Well, you guys are essentially in an ambush waiting for this creature, and it pops into view. Uh, I I don't know if we need to roll initiative, but I think I will cast a spell as well. I think you guys are ready, so you have an ambush round. The ogre rolled very, very well on his surprise check, a natural 10. Um, Mm -hmm. And so while you will get your full ambush round off, Uh, The ogre is not surprised. He was alert and curious as to what these noises are and has been looking for creatures. And And I assume, like, since we set up this ambush in advance, we can be positioned for, like, flanking attacks and stuff as ranged combatants, right? Are we just murdering this thing? I thought we were going to... I wanted to subdue it, but we're probably going to have to, like... I guess we'll find out. How far are we from the camp? Mm, On the order of maybe a few hundred feet. Far enough that, like, your footsteps won't really be heard, but if an ogre bellows, he could probably bellow all the way to that camp. You know, their yeah. voices are loud and they carry far. Mm-hmm. Well, I will be using a light spell to blind it. Um, so I think he comes into our view and sees his wall calling towards him. Um, mm-hmm. Here's some bronze mask of death. Uh, halo appearing above their head and then like glowing expanding to take up his whole field of vision as the light is targeted at his eyes. Uh, saving throw versus spell. Yep. Here we go. The ogre rolls a save. 16 on the die. 
probably He's a pass. Probably gonna do it. There yeah. are. Was um. Sixteen is yes. exactly what they needed. Hmm? Was that my action for the surprise round, or can I? No, no, that was the round beforehand. Okay, cool. So the light, the area around the ogre becomes bright as daylight, which it hasn't been because you're in the shadows of the trees, but this whole area is suddenly very well lit and the ogre mm -hmm. is startled by the, the lights ogres, appearing around um, him. I don't remember if they have like night vision or not, but are they one of the one of the species that like has vision issues and bright sunlight? Not that you're aware um, of. Okay. I don't All think right. so. I mean, we don't have to roll initiative, right? So I'm going to attack it. Yeah. yeah, you can just unload. I don't think order is going to matter too much. Uh, who's fighting it in the front? Can I get a flank attack or a rear attack here? I think I've got it pretty well distracted. But... Okay, I mean, I'll come up. I I'll take my attack from behind then if I can, Neil. Yeah, you can slip behind the ogre who's going after Azul, and you've already sort of positioned yourself to the side. Step behind ten. it. Ten against... Uh, yeah, you find your flail, like, clatters against the ogre's <laughs> back in a way that you would expect to do damage, but he's just got this, like thick hide and the ribs give enough and the, the skin is thick enough and has that like subcutaneous layer of fat that just sort of bounces the flail off of the creature. Uh oh. Uh, I'm gonna go and take a shot myself with my with my sling. Mm hmm. Slinging him. The 16? That will do it. You crack the ogre in the Takes forehead four with a damage. Well, legendary boy. wizard sling. <laughs> That's the way you gotta do it. Yeah. Slingstone is the best level one spell. I mean, it yeah. really is. <laughs> uh, and it's not a, a factor right now, but we should be aware that when you use a sling, you need a lot of space around you. So people can't be too close to you and you can't be too close yeah, to I too many trees. Yeah, I'm kind of off on my own, like by a good few feet. Sure. So I, I went for a flank on this thing, right? Like I assumed right. we were kind of spread out, just sort of surrounded a bit. Which you are, and it's fine. Just for the future, if you're in like a tight situation, a sling is, needs a lot of space to work. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, you crack it for four points of damage. The ogre stumbles with the, the blow on its head, puts his hands to has it, has it, his head as it bleeds out, and I will give his action on his turn, but or on the next round, but the Nyx, I believe, has to go, and John, mm -hmm. June. So would I figure that the, the noise the ogre is making is loud enough to attract the attention of other ogres? Not yet. Okay. Um, well, I, I don't know. I think Nyx is still under the impression that this is the very clumsy try to subdue the ogre because hadn't we said that we would lure one away but didn't think we would try... Like, I thought we were trying to talk to it. So I would like to try and gain a vantage point um, from which I can see whether other ogres are going to approach us or not and just leave the fighting to the other people for now. Absolutely. That um, stone hill is right next to you. You can scramble up it with all of your movement for this turn and peer over to the ogres playing stick water. Yep. I'll keep an eye on them and make sure that they don't come over anytime soon. Fantastic. June? Um. Can I tackle it? Yes, absolutely. All right. Yeah. So, like, it's only eight and a half feet tall, right? It would be like tackling a very 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 big man i think it's, it's one size like above giant, you right right yeah it's one size i think you can do that it gets like a plus four or something for being one size above you all right yeah. my idea here is that like it just got flashed right like it it got it got knocked in the head so it's a little it's it, it like essentially has the effects of like a flashbang right a, a bright flash of light happened it got knocked in the head it's a little silly I don't want to kill it. I want to like charge it and like subdue it, right? So like, I want to like tackle this thing. He turned a little bit away from me, right? So I want to go for one of those very illegal tackles and like um, soccer, right? I just want to like, like take out him Slide at the tackle. knees. Right, I'm going to put my shoulder into the back of his legs and then just uh -oh. like take him, take him down. All and, right. Uh, yeah. Well, why don't you make me an opposed strength check and I'll give you advantage okay. because you have him by like the back. So you've got like okay. a, a better angle than he will have. All right, perfect. Yes. Uh, so first roll is a 23, You're gonna need 27. To do better than that. 27 is pretty good. Ogres are quite strong though. Um, and a natural 18 on the die plus his natural strength is going to be a, a tackle into him. And he stumbles forward, but like puts out one foot 
maintains his ground and gives a bit of a low growl as he like realizes what's going on. These tiny people, these little creatures are being mean to him. That's They're tiny. not friendly at all. <laughs> and I know you're not all uh, tiny, but compared to the... And only a couple feet ogre. shorter than him. <laughs> um, and now we roll initiative for the four of you. I, oh. who's not there? Uh, Nix. Nix has climbed the hill to watch the other ogres. Okay. All right, uh, where did the donkey go? It's like right oh. over there. Yeah. It's there. Mm-hmm. He's nearby. Um, what are my defense options? There's like mm. total defense versus parry. I don't have tumbling, so I guess it's like the two AC bonus if I don't make any attacks. Mm hmm. Offense is probably the best defense in this case. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Are the... we killing it? I want to. I don't want party. to kill it. I mean, I don't do. So why like... did you attack it? Because <laughs> we ambushed. I don't know. I figured we were gonna like what do some dual have? damage, right? Like you I do guys... sling bullets, right? Like they sling bullets are potentially gonna do like some dual damage because yeah. they're blunt weapons. You're all new to the world. This is your first <laughs> opportunity of teamwork, and uh, yeah, we, we can see how it's progressing. And, yeah, let's uh, almost <laughs> kill it, and then we can scare it into talking to us. Yeah, my thing. My thinking was we were gonna do like some dual damage or like convince it to surrender. Right. So some dual damage is a five e thing. Right? It's like. Not- uh, it's a thing in Chewie as well. You can do non-lethal damage, but you need it's like minus four to hit, and only half the damage is real, and half the damage is temporary. And it's a bitch, but you can do it. Uh, it's not worth it. We, can, we I mean, can't even handle an ogre with without pulling our punches. Yeah, so I mean, we also have healers, right? So as long as we don't, like... Uh, not really. We actually as long as we don't healers. dramatically overkill it, we can probably save its life. Mm, we actually don't have healers. I can't cast heal. Well, uh, let's uh, roll the initiative right. as yeah, everyone anyways, kind of panics. I'm, I'm it. <laughs> so I, I just, I want a party vote. Are we killing the thing? Do you I want mean, me to draw my blade it. and kill it? Uh, I, you sound very optimistic. I, I think even if we say yes, that will not be okay, easy to so do. So the answer is yes. All right, I'm rolling. We want to, to talk with it, nature. but bring, go ahead and bring it down and we'll figure out, figure that okay. out after. The party marker rolled a 13. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Uh, so we got a 10, a 13, an 8, and another 10. The ogre rolls uh, 8 and 6 is 14, I believe. Okay. So it will go last, but it is, uh, yeah. Anyway, let's just start with the, the 8, Abaddon. All right. Prepare to die, denizen of death. Can I still get a back attack here? Uh, yeah, I guess you and June are both sort of behind it, and it's, it was looking towards Azul, who had cast the light. Yeah. Oh, great. Nope. Got six nope. There. Your mace swings wildly in the air above June's head, away from the ogre. Azul, Kale? Is it still focused on me? Uh, it's beginning to get a little distracted by these creatures behind it, but it hasn't turned around yet. Oh. Well, come and get it, buddy. I taunt as I set my spear to receive a charge and ready an attack. Okay. Kale? Hopefully. Uh, I'm shield. slinging at it. Is my my ten? I just destroyed my chat box in roll twenty though. <laughs> I'm gonna refresh this page because my chat box is gone and I don't know where it went. That happens. Sometimes it pops right, out as a completely different window. It's loading in, so I'm just gonna roll the d20 plus two. All right, I rolled a ten. I don't think it's gonna do it. Whoosh! The sling Bounces cracks the like tide. hits them in the cheek and just plops to the ground. The ogre gives a low growl, turns to face, like, starts turning to face June as he June pulls his sword out. Yes. I, I pull the leather cord out uh, and let the, like, handle just, like, fall into my hand. And then, like, use that momentum to start just spinning the blade through horizontally. Uh, as with all of my might, uh, that is a natural <laughs> oh, one. No! Nice. Yeah, it is a swing and your blade catches in one of the branches in the tree and just like gets stuck for a moment Yeah. as the ogre looks at you. Can I I, uh, charge in myself at the end of the round? Right, so I like set to receive a charge with my spear and then I see like the ogre turn. All right, 
So the mm-hmm. ogre will go first, but I'm like, June! And I start getting up to rush to join them. Mm-hmm. Well, as the ogre goes. <laughs> uh, the ogre, weaponless at the moment, uh, just goes to grab June's head and try and slam it into a nearby tree. Uh, so he will make a unarmed attack against you. Luckily, your sword is stuck in a tree for the moment, so you can't get an opportunity <laughs> attack. Um, and he rolls a 12 plus three is a 15. Probably. I think he grabs hold of you oh boy. and just like Uh-oh. shoves you into a tree, which will inevitably knock you unconscious yep. um, with five points of damage. June yep. collides with the tree. Maybe. It's certainly not, he's certainly not bleeding, right? Uh, well, let's see. It's blood, it's, I would call it, um, what would you call it? Uh, pummeling damage. So a quarter should be real. The rest of it should be temporary. So and one I guess if a quarter round will down. round. Yeah, so he'll just be unconscious and not bleeding to death. Um, hmm. Slammed into the tree. Honestly, down. the best possible outcome. And then yeah. uh, gives a loud, <laughs> it's time to fight. He shouts oh, loudly. Yeah. Uh, and Nyx um, on the rocks. You can see the other ogres sort of like immediately take alert looks and start right, Neil, scrambling have, for weapons. Here's the thing, Neil. I've been I have been um, prepared for that, right? For that situation. Yeah. So Nyx was waiting, uh, and she has. In the meantime, she's looking at the ogre and how he fights and what he looks like, and just where she, just in front of where she sits, she's gonna pull out one of her cards, um, and from the car, she summons something that looks just exactly like the ogre does. The ogre who is downstairs currently fighting the others. And she makes it seem as if this giant ogre is actually standing like in front of her. So she's not visible, right? He's standing in front of her and he's raising both his arms up to the sky and he's just yelling at the sun right now as she pulls out this card. Uh. And the good thing about it is she doesn't need to make any sound with it because the ogre is making the sound for her, you know? So if you pay really close attention, it might be slightly delayed, but like, you know, what, what he's going to start to do, you know, is um, going to, I guess, are there any any um, trees up on the on the mountain there? Or is it yeah. entirely just? Uh, there's yeah. some smallish bushes, small trees on the, the hill. So he's just going to, like, what it looks like, and he's still a little bit up on the mountain, is he's going to try to start slamming into large rocks and uh, trees that are up on top of the mountain. So if you look at from afar, it looks like he's practicing, right? Okay. Yeah. So the ogre starts, like, attacking trees on the hilltop. Yeah, he's like, you know, and, and in between, you can't hear anything, you know, she's like trying to make sure he, he doesn't hurt his shoulders or anything. So it looks like he's sparring up there. And Nyx is entirely focused on uh, on keeping that keeping that in check as the others are fighting down well, there. Well, well, well. What a clever illusionist spell. Um, I will give the ogres a, a cursory check based on their intelligence, which doesn't go very well for them. Ordinarily, you don't even get to check unless you're pedantic like Nick and you constantly roll to disbelieve illusions. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't matter who he's talking to. He's is always there, rolling to disbelieve the question is, is there a Nick Ogre down there who's like, I disbelieve? Yeah. <laughs> this where, did, were you just told to scrag off, scruff off? What is it? Mm-mm. No? Slag. Slag, slag off. off? Was that yeah, a slag off, Nick? Uh, no? I mean, you could say maybe they're slagging me off, but I don't think they really are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Poor okay. attempts at slagging. Got it. Uh, yeah, the You're ogres are. This whole thing. I'm so sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the ogres look at this one up on the hill, who's like raising his arms and shouting, maybe just like slightly delayed from the other one, but they don't notice the delay discrepancy. And despite him like maybe making attacks towards trees that don't move in response, the ogres like, oh, he's fighting. Okay, and uh, they sit back down in their water and they return to their game. Nice work. Uh, Let's roll initiative for the next round. Uh, I haven't gone yet. Oh, I'm sorry. So I, yeah, yes. I pick my spear out of the ground and charge to the, the back of this ogre. Uh, there's more than 30 feet, right? Yeah. So I can, so I can charge. You can get a full-fledged plus charge. Two to hit. Yes, sir, and two for back attack. Ooh. 12 against AC 15. No, uh, the spear screwed. comes up and Oops. you like 
boink him right in the oh, gluteus. Plus one for blast, but that doesn't matter. You're still off by two. Yeah. yeah. You can uh, drive the spear into his butt. It will bleed, but it is just a minor flesh wound to the great ogre cheeks. Do you hear that, Kale? There's some blood. Oh, yeah. No, I. <laughs> there, there's been blood. I'm ready for it. Wait. Oh, we got plus one for blast. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. matter. All right. Initiative. Initiative. And as I understand it, Nyx is going to be fully concentrated on making the ogre dance. Yes, has to make it as realistic as possible. Otherwise, she might try something else. But right now, that's kind of important. So I'll okay. stick to this for them. Uh, the ogre rolls an eight. Including weapon speed? Including weapon speed. Yeah. Uh oh. Oh, boy. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Listen, if you guys all die, I'm going to run. I'm just letting you right now. Yeah, no, I'm going <laughs> to run. That's going to happen. Okay. Yeah. I don't feel great about this. The ogre steps towards you and reaches out to do the similar thing he did to you, except you have your weapon ready. It's not stuck in a tree. Wait, who so, is this? Is it, is it me or Ryan? Well, I think. Abaddon. Oh, 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 shit, okay. Yeah. Um, and so give me... You can make an opportunity attack as the ogre steps towards you to uh, melee you. non weapon At plus you. four? At plus four to hit, yes. Plus one for blast. Okay. So, so 13. 13 is still a miss. The flail like hits the ogre's arm, maybe distracting Ah! it for a moment. And then what was going to be a grab against you just becomes a backhand against your face. Easy dodge, easy dodge. Easy. (laughs) Jesus Christ. 11 to hit. Get out, not even close. Yeah. (laughs) I was close with him. Who was sweating? Nobody. (laughs) Whips right over you. Uh, who's up next? Me? Azul? Kale. Yeah. Kale? No, Kale. Kale. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong things. Kale. Uh, all right. I'm going to... I mean, this thing is tall, right? There's not a significant worry about friendly fire. Like, it's eight or something feet tall. Yeah, just hit yeah it's like eight and a half, nine feet tall. Uh, there yeah, are some I'm allies gonna... near it. Just don't roll a one. Yep. All right. I'm just gonna. I'm just going to keep slinging at it. Ooh, nice. that'll, that'll do. do Oh, plus the plus two because I still have flanking. So flanking uh, blesses too, yeah. But it's still yeah. just a regular hit. <laughs> oh, right. got it. Takes another point. Oof. Easy. This, this guy, guy is gonna easy. S- look. You, you you just wait until we see all the concussions this guy's gonna have by the end of this. <laughs> all right, he's next. Uh, you did one point of damage. Excellent. Let's just yep. move these dice. There we go. Uh, the ogre does not look particularly badly wounded by the incoming damage thus far. Just so you know. Mm. Uh, Azul, Even back attack. With back attack. I uh, can't. Yeah, can't your thrusts come at the ogre, and he's now definitely aware he's in a fight for his life. So he's moving. He's you know trying to fight Abaddon, but he's aware that there's this like pesky thing behind him. So he's like kicking dust and dirt back at you, grabbing off like branches and kind of chucking him around, giving himself like a nice defensive area that makes it hard to get in and stab. And I believe it's Abaddon's turn. Yes. All right, here we go. Okay, no, never mind. <laughs> here yeah. we don't. The great <laughs> ogre stands around you, shouting out again, calling for, hey, "Come help me squash these creatures!" <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Nix, what do you do about the these oh, creatures? The the creatures. Well, I mean, they they are not really any creatures around that I could. No, I don't want to like <laughs> extend the illusion at all. I think I'm just currently reenacting Rocky. Up the uh, up on the mountain, really, <laughs> you know, like doing the doing the squats and doing the push-ups and uh, you know punching a rock sometime in between. But mm-hmm. I suppose um, you also don't speak ogre, so you wouldn't really know what he's saying. Exactly, I have no idea. I just yeah. see him yelling, so you know that's that's what I do. Right. Okay. Uh, initiative roll. Here we go. Ogre gets a twelve. Ah. Oh, was, Jeebus. was June just? KO'd. Like, if we yeah. bring him back up, is he? Will he be in uh, fighting shape, or, or is he? Yeah, if you can bring him back up, he'll be in fighting shape. He does have temporary damage, but I guess if you have magical healing, he'll be okay. And I saw your Orison changes, and I approved them. Oh, really? Yeah, that I was more to for. Uh, I, I mean, it was. I don't think there you were have like an several Orison, options but... that you can choose between. But yeah, that's for. I liked what you had to say. All right. Do well, you have a healing spell? Can you bring him back to fighting shape? Uh, Potentially, yes. I'm um, Well then. 
So I'll, I guess I'll, let's see. Yeah, use our one and only one healing and only option. Heal. Okay, you go first, Azul. All right, um, Azul sets a uh, sticks or spear in the uh, in the dirt and uh, throws themselves to June, looking up to the sky and uh, crying out for Martha to intervene. Shaking June, like, get up, June. Your humanity's only hope. Martha! <laughs> Martha, look down upon this poor soul and have mercy. A shaft of light pierces the forest, uh, rising from June to the sky, in which small little fae spirits circle June's head. Um, and I, yeah, expend a uh, cure light wounds. Excellent. Nice. Begging for Martha's intervention. Uh, I could roll the d8, but I don't think it actually matters because he only has one life. I only have one HP. And I roll eight. Oh, wow. You nailed it. <laughs> Beautiful. I have been saved eight times over. <laughs> <laughs> eight Junes of healing. Mm -hmm. All right, June, you are up. I guess you can roll into initiative next round, I suppose. Yeah, next round. I keep moving my HP dice because they're just sitting here. <laughs> That's terrible. Okay. Uh, next in line is the ogre who had rolled a 12 on initiative. He's still looking at Abaddon and is going to make Dodge a... Dodge it and weave Dodge it and weave Is he going after Abaddon still? Yeah. Is he yeah. done? He's definitely going after you <laughs> um, and still not bothering to pick up a weapon. He hasn't really been hurt yet. He's just like a couple blows to the head. So he aims a, another meaty hand for your face to try and grab you and smash you into a tree. You can make me another attack of opportunity. The overconfident creature of death. Oh, that'll do it with bless and the plus four. You're going to roll 15. Nice. And Great. the flail clatters into his forearm for how much damage? Come on, one, I believe. Oh, please. Is it more against, wait, is it more against large or not? That's uh, an no. No? Okay. Two damage. Six damage. Ooh, oh, that's actually God, quite a it. bit. It, uh, like, there's a small fracture in his arm. The spikes on the flail cut him open. And the ogre, like, retracts his arm in surprise and rage. Yeah. Does attack go through if he gets hit, Ryan? Yeah, I think so. Um, as he retracts his arm and you're recovering from your blow, he aims a vicious kick towards your crotch. Oh, man. I'm, with, up, I'm up there pretending that I hurt my fist punching a giant rock. With an 18 to hit. Ah, uh, well. Right so now I think Nyx's illusion is far more interesting to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We are about to watch a party member die from a brutal kick to the groin. You're, she also right. has to like keep looking backwards and forwards all the time so she doesn't miss what's going on. <laughs> kind of, you know, strenuous, but she's doing her best. Yep. Well, any amount of damage to you is going to knock you unconscious, Mr. 1 HP. Uh, yeah. And so the kick to the groin... Approach deals five damage. Oh my, my God. fears were justified. Oh. You know the, <laughs> the attack of opportunity is supposed to give a bonus to hit and to damage. Does it? Did we? Yeah, it says the armed defender gains a plus What's, four bonus to his attack roll does and his damage sense. roll. That, that does Whoa. make sense. Whoa. Since when? Since we read the rules. <laughs> <laughs> read the rules? What? <laughs> Plus four to hit and damage. I think that's a combat and tactics rule, right? Because the attacks of opportunity aren't even outlaid in the player's handbook. I don't they, they are I right. put up in the player's handbook, the but it's not referred already. to by those words, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. But yeah, this we, is we got into a very long argument about this. Combat combat recall. Tactics. Page 27, 47, and 83. I mean, we've often gotten rid of this because right. it usually only punishes 
players, but I think it seems fair to consider an ogre humanoid and... It's early like days of the world. Let's play with this rule. It'll be fun. The arm defender gains a plus four bonus to his attack roll, and then in italics and his damage roll against the unarmed attacker. They really so, wanted to emphasize that and. So 10 damage. So it is 10 points of damage, sufficiently more. So that kick is uh, quite brutal in reprisals. The ogre is about, I don't know, around half HP at this point. A slightly broken arm bleeding from his head, super pissed off and shouts Sorry, again. Am I on zero? Am I on like minus something? You're it's on zero, I think, because it's 25% real and you uh, took five. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, shouts again, hey, you guys, I need help. They hurt. I didn't realize we were fighting the Goonies. <laughs> that was that. That's where that's from. <laughs> I knew I knew that from somewhere and I couldn't remember what it was. So, I mean, this is getting more and more unrealistic. So I guess Nyx has to, you know, resort to some, un, you know, weirder measures. So what, what Nyx is doing now is... Um, the ogre is like, I mean, I can't understand what he's saying, can I? Mm -mm. Though, I have no idea. So never mind. We'll skip that. No idea. I'm just yeah. saying it's it's getting harder and harder to maintain this. So we're kind of running out of time. Yeah. You know? Yep. Uh, and uh, June's up. He's going to super crit this thing. Kale oh, gets to go. <laughs> oh, Another blow oh. to the head. Another two. two more points of damage. Look, you uh, just wait. It's all about the number of concussions, not the size of them. <laughs> <laughs> the ogre begins to look around for the source of these incoming rocks that bother him so, and he sets his eyes upon Kale, most healthy member of the party. Oh, uh, with my movement, then I'm running. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I, just, I just bolt and run. Yep. Abaddon would go, but takes no action, and we can roll initiative for the next round. June, your sword is still in the tree, um, but it's right there. 15, 10, 10, and our ogre rolls a 15 as well. I think I'm actually gonna roll next to this one. June and Kale. Oh, right. uh, I am going to duck for cover and hide somewhere because if this ogre gets into melee with me, it's all over. <laughs> okay. Is it all ogre? Oh my God. He's gonna change his direction back to you. <laughs> what is spell? Is it a five? Does it's it the, spell the spell casting, the uh, casting time of the spell. What spell are you casting? Grease. Oh, it has a one. Okay. Wow, you also go with ten. Uh, yep. So Kale begins to flee. Nyx goes to cast a spell. June goes to hit a sword. Yeah, I, I wrench the sword from the, the tree, assuming kind of a stance, and uh, go ahead and take a mighty chop at the ogre. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's initiative. That's the wrong button. Oh, whew. I was going to say another natural uh, one. That's a, that's a 17. That is, that is including a... bless, or? No, that's not including bless. I assume I got knocked out. I'm no longer blessed. Either way, uh, it's going to be a hit, you know, and then won't be a crit. I don't, think, I don't think being knocked out would get rid of bless, would it? No, it's a. If you were the caster, perhaps, but as a subject, okay. you're still endowed. So it's an 18. It hits. It hits. Uh, and I do nine points of damage to him. <clears throat> nice. Oh, wow. That is actually a big deal. The sword yeah. clatters across the back of the. Not clatters. Slices across the back of the ogre, splitting it open. Rivets of blood come down. He, like, spazzes out as his spine takes some damage. And you can see as the ogre turns to face you, his eyes are less angry and more fearful. You've gone from an annoying group of pests to an actual murderous threat. Nyx, you're casting a spell. Yep. yep. So I can I can let go of the illusion, and what happens is the illusion just stumbles off somewhere into into the next uh, forest or whatever it is, like the next mm -hmm. you know behind a large rock. It just dis disappears there. Um, Nyx is gonna scramble down. How much? How far away are they from me right now? The party? Need, like, yeah, I need to be within like 90 feet. Is that even possible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The party's maybe like 150 feet from you. So you can scramble okay. down the hillside. Right. I scram I scramble down there. Um, and Nick <gasps> sees all the... Sees that the ogre by now is... What? 
You wanted to cast a spell first, though, right? Yeah, that's the that's the. Uh, can you move and then cast, or do you have to cast and then? Move? No, you got to cast and then at the end of the very very end of the round you can move. Okay, well never mind then. I'll just let it fizzle and I'll just. Um, I guess, I can maintain concentration still on the other one, and I'll just let the other one fizzle then, because I didn't know that. You have yeah, to... sure. So, are you going to? She's maintaining the I'll illusion. Keep, I'll keep the and illusion up, the okay. and then I'll let the grease fizzle because I didn't know you have to. Um, you don't have to have it you fizzle. Just cast you it. just don't cast it. Yeah, you you would be aware of the rules of spell casting. It's fine. Okay. Um, That's fair. So, do you want to maintain the illusion, or are you still going to let it fizzle and like take some movement to get away? Um. Well, he's fearful now. He's not yelling anymore. I'll let him. I'll, I'll just let him run into the woods. Okay. Um, the illusion. Like and then down it... away from the rest of the ogres, or the woods towards the ogres? Um. He's up on the the ridge, down, right? So that so that the the like so that they had to walk away from us instead of towards us okay. to follow the other the other illusion, right? Got it. So I'm sending them to wherever that is, and then I'm gonna start climbing down and make my way um, towards the rest of the group. Okay. Um, initiative. I don't suppose no. interesting. No? no. Oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Kale. Great. We've got. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, running. So I'm gonna be waiting, and when I don't hear the thing chasing after me, I'm probably gonna like go back to the battle. Should I just roll weapon speed then? In that case, since ultimately it's gonna culminate in a weapon attack, or I could just go at the end of the round because I at the very I would probably go at the end with that. Yeah, you can half move and half rate of fire. I guess yeah, with a sling, that's awkward. Which means you would skip around. Yeah, you would skip. So I think you, you move, Can you, you not run. half move and still make a ranged attack? Yeah, but half move would be one every two. Yeah, it'd be one. It's half range attack with a half move. And so if your range attack is mm. one, it would be every other round. Okay. Um, so yep. I think in this in case, case, like, you start to run move. and then, like, you get far enough away, you realize the ogre's yeah, not so coming and you gonna, start running back. I'm just going to move back once my turn is up, seeing that this thing isn't yeah. chasing me. Okay. Okay. I, assume, um, I assume it's not chasing me, right? No, it's not. Yeah. Azul? Um, uh, I think I go at the same time as Ogre. I mean, I'll I'll attempt to finish it, but it doesn't. Yes. Uh, it, the ogre it, you know, it kicked Abaddon in the groin. It turns to June, who he thought was dead and down, but is now <laughs> back up and murdering him and is going to aim a... Oof, you know what? He's actually just going to break a branch off a tree and try to use that as a weapon. Um, uh can't instantly turn a branch into a weapon. No, I will delay his initiative because he is breaking a branch off of a tree, which yeah. means you will go first. So with back attack, no. 13 plus one is 14, still shy by one, yeah. Uh, he will break a thing off a tree. It's an awkward weapon, uh, and he will try and whirl it in June's direction. Or... A natural four plus three plus two, yeah. probably minus two for the awkwardness of it, is not going to work. Um, it swings over your head, June, hits the tree. The end of the branch like explodes and bursts into sawdust and splinters, and we roll initiative. Here's a question for Just you at the end of the round. That. As mm -hmm. a specialized fighter with the two-handed sword, I get attack twice of every other round right? that I yes. fight. I attacked and I got knocked out. Does that take out my round? Okay. It does. Yeah. <laughs> I, but the bless stayed, so I was wondering. <laughs> That's fair. That's a, a good question yeah. to ask. All right. Um, uh, ooh, the ogre rolls a, a weapon speed of a branch, like five or six. He rolls a 15 or 16. Like a club or something. Yeah. Yeah, but a bigger club. So he yeah. rolls a, a 15, I think. Uh, give 11. up the fighting and just come with us. Hey, you, you words! Stop! Stop! He calls at you. Um, 11, 11, 13, 10. The 10 goes first, Azul. Hey, well. Mine's just moving, so don't nine. worry about mine. Okay, cool. You could make your one every two attack here. Finally! <laughs> Ultra spear. Huge. <laughs> Give him a thrust for the throat for 13 damage, which brings him down deep into the negatives as you spear him like 
right around this point, and it gets stuck in his neck, and you struggle to get it out. And he like puts one hand on the spear as you try and tug think, it, and then I like, think we meant to uh, take him alive, but I just like couldn't hold back the power of the ultra spear. <laughs> yes, and we turned... meant to take him alive when we speared him through the throat. <laughs> Very much a thing that we do to people we like to keep alive. Mm hmm. How deep the, into the negatives does does the ogre go? Like giving a giving a glance, is, are are they still savable? It's like negative seven. You could save him, but it would take maybe like a week for him to heal up. <laughs> it's dead. Unless, it's not an NPC. It's not a PC. It's unless dead. you heal him. Cross zero. Yeah, the ogre collapses to the ground. Um, Nyx has already stopped concentrating on her spell. Let the ogre run into the woods. And uh, with this, the death-curdling scream of this ogre, the others... Hold on, does it make a death-curdling scream if it got stabbed through the throat? I think that's why it's death-curdling, because he's trying, he was, like, shouting, and then the shouting becomes like a... Right, so in that case, would it carry all the way to the camp if it can't make its full-throated... It's a great crying? question. We should roll some dice to determine that. Thank God you're on the other side of the mountain, and you are the other side of the hill, and you can't quite tell what's happening over there. But uh, he does gurgle as he hits the ground and there's a moment before anything happens where the party can exchange glances on what to do next. You have a knocked out Abaddon. What are you going to do? do you know uh, I'm going to pull out an empty vial and collect some ogre blood. <laughs> so we no, have no, no idea what that is. I, no. Yeah, what, I think I'm... I, I know herbalism, have, so... Maybe beyond saving. I, I know. Stay healing. looking to the ogre. Yeah, I'm, uh... I I go. I I I wipe the the sword across the sleeve of my Hayori to clean it from the ogre's blood, um, and lay it a safe distance on the ground, and then move, move over to um, uh, Abaddon and begin to check to see if he's still breathing and like what what administration I can to try. Oh, to you meant him, I say. <laughs> you meant have to save his life. Uh, he is alive. He's not um, about to die. He's just unconscious uh, mm -hmm. from like concussive damage. So he's going to need time to wake up. Okay, and yeah. that's something I can tell. He just he just seems knocked out. He just seems okay. knocked out. He doesn't have any Excellent. like monstrous wounds, no internal bleeding going on. I uh I uh well, I'm just rolling around on the floor, grabbing my dick guards. <laughs> You're <laughs> full fledged unconscious. <laughs> I mean effectively unconscious, right? I, yeah. I open up the, the lid of the flask that's now filled with this potent acid, and I give it a little waft. Is it, um, like, quite uh, uh, odorous? Is it, like, an intensely acidic smelling? Uh, I guess, yeah, it's sort of acidic smelling. I, I don't know right. how intense it is. Then uh, uh, I kind of go, Ugh. And then I wave the open container underneath uh, Abaddon's nose. Stop, what are you doing? <laughs> to to try pushes, to like shock him uh, away. Pushes much, like, the side of the way. That's, that, that's, isn't that acid? <laughs> um, I do have the first aid proficiency. Okay, well, he's not bleeding to death. He's just yeah. like KO'd. You're gonna need to and move I'm him. I'm pretty sure that wafting acid at him will not help the situation. Well, I'm getting the donkey, Neil. I'm getting or the whatever yeah, I, kind of. How much weight can a this. donkey carry? All right, let me pull out the, the monstrous man. <laughs> <laughs> Your donkey. Uh, do you want a lifting or pulling weights? Because he can drag can many thousands lifting, of pounds. Lifting. Let's go with lifting, because we don't want to. We don't so many drag concussions. Abaddon. We don't have sled technology, so we can't. We can't right. drag Abaddon. That's true. Uh, so 180, 360, 540 is the so encumbrance it's be for donkeys. Probably, like, we'll be lightly encumbered. encumbered. Yeah. For some reason, humans have like five levels of encumbrance, but animals only have three. So he'll be in the middle zone. Um, so would that be movement rate eight or something? Nine, I believe it. I, uh, nine, yeah, I weigh two sixty. No with, eight. Yeah, yeah, that's weird. You weigh two sixty with gear. Although I have lost yeah. a nut, so I probably like two fifty five now. <laughs> you have five pound nuts? Oh my God, how do you walk? Um, yeah, you can. You together, you guys can hoist Abaddon onto the donkey. Let's get out of here before his friends. 
join the fray. June, you said I you laid like... your sword down. You're not leaving it behind, are you? No, I, I just did that because I, I can't retie it to my back quickly. And so rather than hold a sword over my fallen compatriot, I just laid it away and I'd pick it back up. Let's I just want to see. make sure I understood if you were like yeah. leaving a sign for the ogres that June was here or like- No. Okay. Um, yeah, you guys grab the donkey. You start loading Abaddon onto it when an ogre appears on the top of the hill and shouts out an ogre, Archer, your body! Which, Azul, you know to be like, hey, there's some little people here. Hmm. How far away is this? About 150 feet. It's at the top of the hill that Nyx was hiding at. Okay. I think we skedaddle. Right. Yeah, we're just gonna start. We're just gonna start going for it. You guys um, can as skedaddle. we start to like crest the hill, going down it, I'm gonna go ahead and cast Wall of Fog and create like a barrier, um, is it, like in a particularly dense area of forest, right? And you cast mm-hmm. it off to I want anyone that tries to like pursue us through this to like start running into trees. Is my goal? Sure. The forest is actually quite dense and thick all over the place, so you are able Perfect. to very easily uh, blanket yep. your escape, and the ogres will have to be careful or run into trees. Nice. I think with the Wall of Fog, we don't have to do any escape chases or rules like I was planning on doing. So you can break free of the ogres and head back, I assume, to the the valley? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We got, we we got a piece of information. You arrive back in the valley a little while later. Abaddon slowly coming to consciousness after an hour or so. Gods, that hurt. Abaddon, are you feeling all right? <laughs> uh, actually, I'm sorry. No, you're you actually are at zero zero. And most of that was temp. No, you will I be unconscious until tired. the next day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going back to sleep. See you later. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> he wakes Never up just mind. long enough to be like, "Oh my balls!" and then falls unconscious once again. Yeah. I'm saying, like, could you describe very carefully the sensation you are experiencing? No, Abaddon! Abaddon! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, party, you make it back to the clearing. Um, why don't we take our last break right here, and when we come back, we'll finish out our session. See you guys on the other side. <laughs>